In this section, let's delve into the hair tool for more precise control over hairstyles. First, use radius curve, which allows us to use curve to control the thickness of hair and randomize it. To make it work correctly, there are a few steps to follow. First, change the renderer to Psycho's hair that comes with 3D hairbrush. Then select strip here. In the Particles tab, you notice two additional settings. Check the Use Radius Curve option. To see the final effect, switch to Material Preview mode or Rendered mode. By default, the curve looks like this. When you adjust it, you notice the hair has changed accordingly. From its left to right, it represents the thickness of hair from root to tip. Adjust it as needed. And for finer details, you can add more points. OK, let's move on to use diameter random, which comes with three parameters. Random seed is the seed of randomness. Start controls the intensity of randomness. At the value of 1, randomness is disabled. Threshold regulates the proportion of hair with random thickness. As you increase it from negative 1 to 1, all hair will transition from the finest shape to the original thickness at different speeds. This process gives us hair with random thickness. By the way, if your shape includes too many details, you may need to increase the steps in the Render tab to make them visible. Conversely, if there are too many points and you want to remove one of them, simply select it and click the cross. That's it. Alright, let's talk about the next feature, Convert Curve to Hair. Here we already have a few curves and a sphere. Before converting them, there are a few things to check out. Jump into edit mode first. Set the curve type to poly because the conversion only works correctly in poly mode. To get the transformation result that closely resembles the original curve shape, make sure the curve's root is as close to the surface as possible avoiding intersections or excessive distance. Additionally, don't forget to apply the curve's location, rotation, and scale. After that, we can proceed with the conversion. Select the curve and then the sphere, and click the Convert Curve to Hair button. If you keep this option checked, the converted hair will be named after the curve. You might notice that hair doesn't perfectly match the curve due to low steps. Let's increase the hair steps, including the strand steps in viewport display and steps in render. Next. Let's discuss how to import the hair into other software. Here is a simple case. The guides are like this. With a noise modifier, they ultimately resemble chaotic hair. To export this chaotic hairstyle correctly, we should use the lambic hair modifier from 3D Hairbrush. As you can see, the built-in export ABC would fail to export this hairstyle correctly. To export this chaotic hairstyle correctly, we should use the Lambic Hair Modifier from 3D Hairbrush.
By the way, if the exported curve is not smooth, it indicates that the steps in the render tab are insufficient. So make sure the steps are adequate before exporting. Last but not least, let's talk about Cycles Hair Render, which comes with 3D hairbrush, but is based on Cycles Renderer. So when using the Cycles Hair Renderer, you need to make sure the Cycles engine is enabled. To better visualize the hair color group, thickness, and modifier results, we've updated the Cycles Hair Renderer. Previously, you could only view the results correctly in material preview mode or rendered mode, which are both resource intensive. To address this, we've changed material preview mode to solid mode. Now when you select material preview mode, the result is actually displayed in solid mode. In this mode, when we enable use radius curve or use diameter random, their effects are visualized in real time as well as the effects of color groups. Sometimes the show overlays feature may not work immediately, but these two buttons help resolve the issue.